On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about some of the keys to building a successful cash-based physical therapy practice. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I'm here, champion PT and performance, answering your questions, anything you want to talk about. PT, the sports world, performance, fitness, uh, business, career advice, anything you want to talk to, head to MikeReynolds.com, click on that podcast link, and you can fill out the form to ask us questions. Let's see. I'm here today with Kevin Coughlin, Mike Scudetto, Duesh Podell, Dave Tilly, Jonah Monlock, and, and Lenny McCrean. I almost skipped Lenny to go straight to the students. Did I get Dan Pope? Hi. <laughs> oh, no. wow. I, I, I tried to zigzag and that was the worst intro in a while, but all right. Uh, and then, and, and Lenny Macrina. Len, who do we Hello. have for students? We, we have a large crew of students right now. We just happen to be at that time of the year at Champion where there's a lot of students, but uh, who do we have today? Yeah, we have an overlap by about a week, so we'll be losing one and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, um, we have in no particular order, uh, Daniel Quillen from Mary Baldwin University in the great state of Virginia. We have Chris Clary, continuing our Southern theme at Anderson University in South Carolina. Uh, we have Matt Ellison from the University of Wisconsin, but not the big campus, La Crosse, where La Crosse was invented, apparently. We have Jake Woodrich from Duville, Duville in Buffalo, New York, and Anthony Vedetto is actually from Massachusetts, and he is from the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences Incorporated LLC TM, patent pending. I like it. So very strong pharmaceutical uh, education yeah. curriculum, I'm sure, for, for yeah. Anthony in his curriculum. Right. That'd be good. I like that. Yeah, it's good, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Great, great. I mean, you know what, Len? Great job with the intros today. I thought you really did a good Thank job. You. I think we should, we should encourage and compliment each other more. Great job. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. I was rehearsing silent, all silent, silent Zoom round of applause <laughs> on that one. But yes, awesome. Right. Uh, all right. What, what, what do we have for a question today? What do we got? Who's up? All right. So Take this question time. is from Corey from Santa Clarita. He says, what are the essential elements that go into building a successful cash-based PT clinic like Champion PT and Performance? Not the uh, specific state or state requirements for starting your own business, but what strategies should I focus on and utilize that will help me grow my business and make it prosperous? I'm going to that. That draw next week, everybody. I'm just going to say for the record. Yeah, good job, Chris. Oh, there'll be others. There'll be others, Dave. There's always more. <laughs> Great job, Chris. That was awesome. Um, you know, good question here from Corey. I like this, and I like how Corey, you know, I, I, I like how he's like, you know, not like the details of like getting your license and stuff like that, but how do you make it successful? Not just open up a clinic, but make it successful, right? I think Lenny, I'll start quickly with Lenny and I's strategy. The first thing we did was, it, it was a little bit hard to find, but we got smoke. Right. And we had this and we had it for a while and we were thinking, what are we going to do with this? And then we found a mirror and then we put smoke and mirrors together. And <laughs> that's that is when the champion exploded. Right. So <laughs> you guys are like, where am I going with that? <laughs> like it, like <laughs> My nine year old would crack up at that one. But anyway, um, I, you know, I, I, I think this is a good perspective. Why don't we why don't we start with this? Because I, I think this is almost like a question you have to reflect on a little bit. But, you know, each of the therapists here that work for us, I mean, you could argue has their own like mini cash based practice right because you still have to serve your clientele we're a very service based industry you know i think our coaches in the gym are the same <laughs> as well right very service based with things that they do so i don't know i mean len maybe from the business standpoint what were some of the keys that you think that we talked about maybe you and i would go back and forth on this and then i'd love to hear from the pts to say like maybe the one or two things that they think um transition them from you know from an insurance based model to here like what were some of the things that were successful but len you want to start? I think, sure. I think in my memories, I probably should uh, have a diary of all this at some point and write a book, but um, boy, could I write a book with my 20 years of experience as a PT. Anyway, um, I think it goes back to, you know, we talked a lot when I was in Birmingham and you had left the Red Sox 
And you going to that uh, gym in Needham at Pure Performance and just kind of running kind of a beta um, cash-based practice, you by yourself with a massage table, um, and it just took off. Like, literally just like you were crushing it. And we were like, I think we can pull this off. <laughs> like It was just like, you, if you build it, they will come. Um, you know, if I think if you're a good person, you got some personality, um, you treat people well, um, you're there for people, you, you, you answer their text messages and email queries, and you are trying to help them and you facilitate things for them, getting to doctors and giving honest opinions on what's going on with them. And they can, they can see through the BS. And if you are honest with them and treat them well, and you know, you, you built, you started it with uh, pure performance, having that little cash based table. Um, and then I came up and said, and we said, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll quit my job and, and, and we'll figure this out. And then my schedule was busy. I mean, days later. And I think that's been a current, a trend with everybody who's come on. We were always worried. Will we be able to fulfill the PTs? um schedules and then it just it just catches on and then if you bring in good people we have amazing people that are there for their patients and their clients and and people see that and refer their families and friends and it just it just it just carries on and on and on so i think just having a plan seeing what the market is seeing what the rates are not being too aggressive with your rates and keeping it simple keeping it clean you know, we had a few tables. I think you went to some, a PT went out of business in like Rhode Island, if I recall, and went, went down and bought like a hydrocolator and random yeah. stuff. And you stored it in your garage for a while. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. 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 We got a U-Haul and truck right. and <laughs> it was in my garage for like a solid year. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, if Kaiser. you think about some of, the, some of the, yeah, some of the stories of like this person was running like, <laughs> going out of business sale, and, you know, and, and, and we took advantage of that. It's still our hydrocolator, I believe. And so little things like that, like start small um, and you know, develop your niche in the community. And hopefully you have connections in the community where you've already been practicing for a while. So people know you because they're going to follow you. Um, and you know, it just took off after that. And, you know, it's funny that it, it, all the students still keep coming and saying like, like, ah, so like, we always ask, like, all right, so what do you want to do? What's like your dream stuff? And they're like, uh, oh, I want, I want to do exactly what you're doing. I'm like, great, right? Like next year, or like, do you want to take 25 years to get it? Like, I don't know if they they realize that. So it's actually funny you share that because I don't know if we've ever talked about some of those like silly little things behind the scenes. But we're talking about two established, well known physical therapists in the world that were squirreling away Kaiser machines that we're getting from Craigslist in my garage. I still have crap in my attic that we never use, to be honest. <laughs> I should probably go through my attic, right? But it's everyone thinks like the path to success was simple and easy and quick, right? Even for somebody that's experienced. So um, I, you know, that's actually a good humbling way to kind of, you know, think of it. Um, I, I would say what I would take, the two things I would take from this, from you, Len, that, uh, you know, how do you have a successful practice? I would say that we were experts in something right not everything we're not amazing we're not like the best at everything we're not the best physical therapists in the world but we were experts at something so we had a strong niche a strong passion and i think in a service-based industry that helps a ton because it just helps with everything communication marketing uh you can just talk the talk right i think that part is really really interesting but i think the other thing sometimes you and i take for granted is that our attention to detail and service is something that i think not a lot of people understand and and i don't know i don't know about the current generation and you know things are different right this is you know we're we're, we're more than two decades out now so we're freaking old land but like you know service is interesting right i cannot tell you in the last week how many people how many clients current and past that i've i've been texting with and talking to and doing things with right like like when when somebody texts you at 9 p.m you don't say like oh it's not during my work hours like i don't want to give my personal cell phone i mean it's service right and we're there to serve and that's what has these like repeat you know like you know people over time is that we dedicate ourselves to those people because we enjoy it we like doing it and we were taught that we were taught that by kevin Wolf. we were taught that by dr james andrews right he's you know probably one of the most accessible hard-working people out there and they're some of the best but they're also some of the the you know the more accessible people in service-based industry so you know i like that line and i would say like those are probably the two things that I think you and I would probably credit the most, but I'd lo love to hear from the other guys. If, if, if you each had one, maybe like Dave, Dan, uh, Kevin and Mike, like start with you guys, but like, what's the one thing that you think that you do that makes you successful at this cash based business, Dan? 
Yeah, uh, there's there's a lot with this one, right? Uh, <laughs> I know one's not fair. Yeah, it's okay. I think um one of the big things, and we tend not to think as you know entrepreneurs or business people as physical therapists, but we essentially solve problems, right? And that's kind of business one on one. If if you you know toilet paper is something that solved a really big problem, right? <clears throat> <laughs> and people buy it. Um, I think that as physical therapists, we have to think about this a little bit too. You know, in the typical market, we have a lot of folks that don't have the best care because they want to get back to higher level sports. Insurance doesn't cover that, right? So I think the problem that we saw for the consumer is basically they want to get back to something that's higher level and they can't do it with the standard model, right? And we're actually there for that. So I, you know, I'm a big guy of like, you know, pick your niche, kind of go deep in that, build a community, all that stuff. But I think that the, what you have to ask yourself first is that, are you solving a problem that needs to be solved, right? Because if you don't have something that solves a problem, you don't really have a business and you might just be ramming something down people's throats. They don't really want or need. So I think that you probably need to start with that and figure out if you're actually helping folks from that perspective. I like it. I like what you said right there too. Like we all believe in the niche and I think we always think of the niche as like the type of person we want to work with. But I like how you kind of rephrased that a little bit or reframed it almost as like a niche in the market need, right? So the gap isn't necessarily working with fitness athletes. It's getting them from acute to return to the gym, right? That's the gap. And and I think that's, that's a great way to think of it. I think that's what cash base does for a lot of people without insurance restrictions is it allows you to do that. Um, so that's a good one. I think we can both argue whether or not toilet paper really solved that problem or not. I think it made it worse, but that's a whole nother conversation. But uh, I don't know. I think I saw Mike uh, first. What, what do you think, Mike? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I haven't been at Champion for, for a few years now. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we all try and do is, is really excel at the communication with the clients. And oftentimes, I think clients and patients come to us and a lot of times it's a second opinion. They've been to an orthopedic surgeon. They've been to uh, other physical therapists, and they didn't necessarily get the answers that they want, or they weren't satisfied with the diagnosis or the treatment plan. Um, and I think where we kind of excel is, is trying to communicate what our, what our plan is, how we're going to get you to where you want to be. And then also, if we need to pivot and change your treatment plan, I think we're, we're, we excel at kind of communicating um, how and why we're going to do that. And I think that's a big reason why patients keep coming back for repeat injuries, you know, in the future, if they get hurt down the line, like we're the first people they call because they know that we can communicate with them about what's going on and how we're going to work to fix it. I like that. That's a great example too, Mike. Um, perfect. Yeah. Kev, what do you think? Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> just as someone that's joined the staff, you know, a little later than some of you other guys, uh, I think <clears throat> where you guys have mentioned the niche a lot makes a ton of sense. And I can see that as a newer therapist, uh, you know, we get so many people that are from all of your individual niches, you know, baseball, gymnastics, fitness athlete, golf. Um, and I think you guys have treated them so well over time that it just keeps expanding and we get so many different kinds of athletes now. And I think it's all the things you guys have touched on, uh, communicating with the person. You know, I think that was a, that was a change from the insurance model to this when I joined champion is getting text messages all week. Um, you know, at any time of day, and you just find that, you know, the person is so invested in their own uh, outcome, you know, maybe that's because they're paying, they're paying cash that they really want the best service possible, and you want to provide that for them. Uh, so I think it's really a combination of things where you guys have just treated these niches so well over time, we just keep getting more and more people from different backgrounds and treating them well, and, you know, responding to their needs that they reach out to family and friends, or like Mike just said, you know, we have just in my you know year year and a half there um have a lot of repeat clients you know that something else pops up and they shoot me a text and we decide if it's something i can just send them and they don't even need to come in or if it's something that you know let's come in and get this eval and uh give you a plan and i think that's just the other big thing is uh in the cash-based clinic you have to be comfortable you know some patients you only see once every three or four weeks and it's it's having them manage a lot of stuff on their own which I think is different than the insurance model as well. Yeah, I think that's great, Kevin. And, and, and just, again, a good way of, of like putting it together a little bit. When you put yourself out there, right, and you truly care about helping that person, right? I mean, it's it's like you're becoming part of, you know, they're part of the family, right? And you have to treat them that way. So everybody wants a guy, right? So like, like you're talking to your buddy, you know, and you're like, oh, you, 
your shoulder hurts, I got a guy, right? Like everybody wants a guy, right? But you're, you're putting yourself in that position to be like, I got somebody I can refer you to because I know these guys are going to go that extra step and they're not going to be embarrassed by that recommendation, right? They're not going to say, oh, go to this PT place and then the person has a bad experience. I think they feel comfortable they're going to have a good experience from that. So uh, great stuff. Uh, Dave, what do you think? Yeah, mine's pretty quick. I mean, it just came up yesterday. I was talking to Dan. Dan, just give me a thumbs up if I can blow your spot up a little bit. But like he was asking about like, what do you like, what's the best like starting advice to find a place? And I think it's underappreciated, like how how much you have to actually sacrifice to really make it, um, you know, as a good clinician, but also just someone who wants to work in cash base, like especially up front, because I had you two to help me with a schedule early on, but still like, I had to live pretty tight on a budget for three months to make sure I could transition out of a consistent paycheck every time. And I had to put in so many hours outside of the clinic to to do well, to research problems and figure stuff out and go to courses and read. And I think like that's underappreciated out of new grads, which is like in this, in this like screen right here, we probably have three to 5,000 hours of unpaid hours this year of stuff that we've just done reading research, trying to figure out, find a doctor, or late night text messages, coming in early, sitting in traffic to get there because somebody needs a time that you only have. And I think that that's just like undervalued as a new grad is like you have to really be willing to kind of, you know, eat dirt a little bit in a positive way, investing in yourself in the future. And I think that's what you and Lenny did early on, which was like, you know, you got to go in at eight because somebody needs you and somebody else needs you at one, but like you got to go back at one to help that one person out. And I think, I think sometimes that mentality has got to be adopted a little bit early on as a new grad. I like that. Right. Because we're there to serve. Right. It keeps coming back down to that. Right. Everybody always asks, like, you know, how do I need to, you know, you know, learn or something like it's really hard to open up your own cash based practice by yourself if you're not good at your job. And that's it's almost like assumed you have to be good at your job to, to be able to do that. Right. But then from there, everyone's just like, well, you know, what do I need to do to get better? And all we do is recommend them books on customer service. Right. And like and uh, human interactions. Right. Like, you know, how to win fl- friends and influence people like to sell as human. Right. Start with why like these these are all the books we recommend people like start reading so that way they understand this process of service-based industry um i think that's uh you know pretty neat uh duesh jonah anything from the gym side right i mean i think it's very similar where you guys want to be almost like the training concierge to some of these people and you know know, i'm sure they're they're texting you late at night about how do i add 10 pounds right like there's probably something going on any anything you guys think is part of the key to your success as champion in the gym yeah i think pretty similar to what you guys have already said in terms of making sure that you're really building the relationships with people uh being available at all times of day and stuff like that um i think on the other end I think you you mentioned it just now, but being good at what you do does go a long way, right? Like if you're not getting results for people in the gym, if you're not keeping them injury free and, you know, getting them stronger, faster, bigger, more powerful, like if you're not helping them with their goals, then they're probably not going to keep coming back. But if you can keep providing them value as far as making a goal specific to them and helping them reach their newer heights, then you're probably going to have people that are going to like you for a long time and respect you for a long time and recommend you to other people for a long time. Um, so that's, that's, a good that's really what I would say. Yeah, that's a good one too. And I think in the PT world, we're guilty of that. I mean, I guess in the training world too, we're guilty of that sometimes is you try to, you, you're working on your goals for the person, not their goals for themselves, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have, you have your own plan in your head. It's not about you. It's about them. But, uh, what do you think, John, anything else to add? I think just in general, like being a place that other places aren't. So like going back to the original question of the cash based PT, set yourself apart by, I think what you guys do is having a massive gym there where you can go in and people are doing sled pushes or doing legitimate workouts as part of their PT. And I think from the gym side, us having you guys right next door is a massive piece of it where somebody rolls an ankle or something happens and we can just get one of you to check it out real quick. And I think that provides a ton of value. Um, so having that back and forth to create an environment that you wouldn't get in just a typical gym or in just a uh, insurance-based PT, I think, is something right. that's been useful and awesome aspect of working at Champion. Yeah, and not just having it, but having the right staff that uh, you know is ego-free and collaborates. Right, I think that's that's a key p- part of it too. So, um, all right, great stuff, Corey. Great question. Hopefully, that was helpful. I think that was pretty good. Um, you know, I think there's a market need. We've been talking about this. Dan Pope really wants me to talk about this more, but we got to get some. We got to do some mentorships where we're helping people with some of these things because I, I I think there's you know there's some shortcuts that we can help you guys with. So I don't know. We'll say maybe that's an Easter egg, Dan, for anybody that made it to the 18th minute 
end of this podcast episode. Uh, but, uh, but hopefully, hopefully it's coming, uh, when we, uh, when we put our heads together and can start helping. But if you have questions like that, head to micron.com, click on that podcast link and ask away and be sure to head to Apple podcast, Spotify, and give us a rating and a review. Subscribe. We really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.